Hey. I'd like to welcome everyone to Monday, September 12th, Park and Rec meeting. It is 6.37. We'll call the meeting to order. Um, seeing lots of people in the audience, um, I'll let public forum speak. Um, you just need to come up to the microphone, state your name, your address, and you have um, three minutes to speak. So if anyone would like to come up and speak. Up. Excellent. Welcome. I'll volunteer. <laughs> So I, I want to say thank you to the town of Guilford for the... I'm here for pickleball. I'm like a pickleball fanatic. And I've got to know all these people in this room playing pickleball. And just to share with you how dedicated picklers... How do you do your name and your address? Oh, so, I'm sorry. My name's John. Last name is Sunday. Six Potter Hill Drive right here in Guilford. I'm a four-month player in pickleball, and just to let you know how dedicated I am as a pickler, I borrow the net from Park and Rec for Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'm Park and Rec light. Stephanie has five days a week at Bittner. I do Tuesdays and Thursdays at Adams, and I keep trying to get Rick to not redo the tennis court, just make four new pickleball courts. But that's another story. <laughs> but in, in any case, uh, Stephanie's program is expanding what a big surprise with pickleball, right? So it's going to eat into my use of the, your net. She's got Monday. She's not eating into my days, Tuesday, Thursday, but she's going to eat into the use of the net. So she said, we have another net that's out of the rotation because it needs repair. I'm going to fix your net. And I'm here to ask you tonight if you would pull out, out of your petty cash about under 100 bucks to buy three poles because I'm going to fix the net. But today I picked up the net, which is not a big deal to fix, and Stephanie goes, oh, there's three posts missing. So even if I fix your net, it's useless. <laughs> so I found a place online that I can buy replacement posts, and I hope that you will consider, like I said, probably under 100 bucks. It's, I think there's four posts missing. <clears throat> and it's like, how can posts be missing when somebody uses your net? Anyway, that's all I have to say. Thank you very much, and we hope to see more pickleball courts built in. Anywhere. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak? Go ahead. Hi. Julie Schlesel, 177 Stepstone Hill Road. And uh, I'm here for pickleball also. And I had um, put a request in that I... I, my understanding is you're going to start a pickleball committee to look at the um, possibility of expanding the pickleball courts. And I would like to maximize the space that's where the pickleball courts are and put as many as we can fit uh, up there on the top area and maybe move the uh, skateboard park. But I would like to be on the committee for pickleball to help uh, facilitate uh, getting more courts so that's about. <laughs> um, I ask a serious question. Um, how many courts are you all using in, in a day? I don't play pickleball. I work up in Hartford, so I don't. Oh. I don't have a clue as to the intensity of what's being done down here. With well, we have four. We okay. usually up, up at Bittner. Uh, uh, we usually set up two uh, uh, nets. And then sometimes there's standing room only that people are waiting to rotate in. And also there's a waiting list for people to play. So um, there's definitely there's a demand for more than what the capacity is that's up there. I, no, I live near lakes. I see people playing at lakes. Do they have their own equipment that they bring with Probably. them? Probably. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And is that the same at... Adams in the back tennis court, yes, so yes. everybody else brings their own equipment with them. Yeah, the lines are painted for pickleball, but there's no names. Okay. And when you have the basketball lines and you're playing pickleball, it's very confusing to with the lines on knowing where you, like no one ever wants to play on the other courts that aren't the permanent courts, but we all take a turn doing that. Um, so. Are yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Be a little careful though, because I have tennis players ask us not to put pickleball lines yes. on the tennis courts. Uh, the, the, just yesterday yeah. or last week, the, 
I, I will echo that a little bit because when I drive past lakes, I, I see the people playing tennis, not pickleball. And so I asked them, the, which well, do you prefer? And they, pre I'm sorry to say, they prefer tennis because they, they, they're getting their little kids involved with it first. So um, there's room for everybody. I mean, that, yeah. that, that's not, not to say I don't well, uh, the, the deny it as your, your need for doing this. And yes, we do need, if this is an expanding uh, sport that we need to find more space for. Um, You're redoing Adams, so you can probably do two uh, tennis courts without the pickleball lines and then add a couple of pickleball courts. There's a lot of like land over there, a little like space. Yes. So I would imagine that you can do uh, courts similar to what's up at Bittner down near Adams and also leave room for the two tennis courts without the pickleball lines for the tennis people. Okay, I'm, I'm going to uh, ask that we uh, okay. we don't engage in the public forum, that um, they just speak what they need to, and then okay. we can move the agenda, um, since there is a large okay. group here, that we will move the agenda item up so that we can debate Thank you. what we need. Um, anyone else want to talk about pickleball? Or anything? <laughs> yeah, anything. <laughs> anything. Pop Sorry, it's not just pickleball. <laughs> Uh, Keith Show, 229 Shore Drive, and I just want to say we really, really appreciate the course that you put in. We love it up there. We're up there all the time, and, and there's a waiting line to, to play uh, every time we're there, and if you go up there on the weekends, there's people waiting to play as well. So, you know, we, we try to, I don't know what the forum is, you play for an hour and then give the court up, but those, those courts are great, and uh, there is a need for more because kids that I coached 15 years ago that live in Brantford, they're up there playing pickleball. I mean, it's growing so fast. I don't think you can really keep up with it, but I hope you do, you know. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anyone else? My name is Luis Juarez, uh, 51 Barn Shetling. I'm the husband of my wife. And uh, <laughs> she, already, she already retired and is playing a lot of pickleball. I'm looking forward to 27 months from now when I retire also, and I'll be able to play pickleball in the morning. I think it's a great sport for all the people because it's easy to catch it up. And uh, yeah, the quality of the courts in, uh, in Britain are excellent. Something like that in more of the places of the town will be very appreciated. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, since there is a large group, um, I'm going to ask someone to make a motion to um, move unfinished item C, um, request for more pickleballs to now so that we can have a conversation with ourselves and hear what everyone just said. Um, and <coughs> you guys don't have to sit through our entire meeting if you don't want to. <laughs> so I'll make a motion to move item 8C from the agenda to now. All second. So all approved? Uh, okay. Perfect. Um, so Rick, um, two months ago, was it two months ago that we all met up there? Yeah. Was it, okay. Um, so the commission did meet up at Bittner two months ago, right before, right before the last meeting. Yeah. July. Yeah, it must have been July, because I was not here August. No. Um, to talk about the need for more pickleball courts and how and if and when it could happen. Um, we did meet with Stephanie Blaha, who gave us a schedule of the time that the pickleball courts are being used. Um, according to that schedule, in my opinion, um, it looked like there were a lot of times during the day that the court was open. Um, there's definitely times scheduled that she is running her program um, up there, but it seemed like there was a lot of open time. Um, so I don't know what anyone else on the commission has. Yeah, I mean, we just put, we just put, uh, the town just put four courts in. Right? I think everybody needs to relax. We just can't just start throwing put courts up there. We just put four in, and now because everybody's saying, well, we need more courts, we need more courts, we just can't go you know, spending thousands and thousands of dollars to put more courts in just because. Yeah. And we got to, we got, like Stephanie, or, like Claire said, I mean, we got a schedule where there's a lot of open time. So well, I, I think, think that's one thing that came, sorry, I think that's one thing that came up um, at the meeting last time, I think one of us or me said it, is that the schedule that we were presented to from 
presented by Stephanie that had the schedule of all the organized things, it does appear that way that there's a lot. So I wasn't right. sure if there's certain times of day when it's more crowded at pickleball and if there's other times. So I think there was more information we were looking for on that. Is that is this correct? Well, my thought is that I think people like to go when they know other people will be there to play. And so now you know Stephanie will be there and it'll be organized. But it might help if we posted certain type play and some of the open time so people would know I could show up at noon and there'll probably be a group of eight or 12 people and you know you sort of work out your levels yourselves and at the last meeting someone was speaking about when they go to a park and when they're not playing they put their paddles down and they play the winners on that court and if there's open time you know that people knew others would be there that might work as well yeah, from what I understand, Stephanie's classes are Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, right? And I don't even know if it's Wednesday morning also, but, oh yeah, she does have Wednesday morning. She has Monday, Wednesday, Friday mornings, and then Wednesday afternoon she teaches, right? But the rest of the time, the weekends and all of Tuesday, Thursday, and Monday, Wednesday afternoon, or Monday, Friday afternoons, it's completely open. So. I think it is a matter of when people want to play, if that's what I'm hearing. Well, that's a, is, did Stephanie, come, after we met with Stephanie and met up there um, as a commission, I know we had asked her a few follow-up questions. What, did she have anything to come back with on how she was feeling and what her thought process was? Uh, no, but if I will add, though, we just started, we're having some, uh, some leagues starting tomorrow. And we have a lot of people signing up in leagues. I, don't, I can't tell her somebody how many. I'm sorry, I didn't think about getting that. but. Um, that's starting, I believe that's going to be Tuesdays and Thursdays uh, in the morning. And so um, there's no question there's more scheduled time now than there was even when we did the schedule right. uh, two months ago. Yeah. Um, again, because of the demand. And so staff have put together a league because people want it. And so now we have an organized league too. But so the, the, the downside is that that takes away a little bit more of the open time. You know, so now there's other scheduled times where you can't go and play because there's something going on out there. Normally, and I, sorry, I go by there so many times, I don't think they look all that much, but normally we put a schedule up when the uh, courts are booked so you know. Um, and hopefully my staff have done that for the fall. I, I'll have to go and check or ask them. Well, right but now, normally, is, but the, our classes are posted right there. Yeah, the yeah. And then so the, the um, leagues should be posted there also. So if yeah. you wanted to go on Thursday at 9 o'clock and there's a league there, you're not going to be able to play probably. So we want to make sure you know that and, and not um, – take the time to go. Is the lead through us? Parking yeah, right? parking okay. right, yeah. Um, and there are other organized groups that, you know, go up there that are, you know, Guilford residents. I, I've seen them there on Tuesday or Thursday mornings. It's just an organized group of people that go and play. Um, it's not through Parks and Rec. It's just they just go and, and play there. Um, I mean, I think that I, I, I did, seriously, I did have a, a person from tennis complained that there were pickleball court lines on the tennis courts. And so there's divergent interests, you know. And, um, and I explained to the, the person I spoke with that our plan is to continue putting pickleball court lines, lines on the tennis court. And I said, you know, if you go to any basketball court uh, in a gym, you have volleyball lines or basketball lines or all kinds of lines. You have to remember that, okay, red is pickleball, white is tennis, whatever. You just got to remember it and figure it out. But I understand seniors have, because I'm a senior too, you have a little tougher time uh, uh, identify what line is what, but um, but anyway, the uh, we'll be talking about the tennis courts in a little bit, I think. Anyway, but um, I think at Binner, one thing we've talked about is if we can even move the skate park 90 degrees, it would still have the proper distance between ramps. They just wouldn't have the space behind them, mm -hmm. and then we could still, if, if we want to, put a basketball court next to the skate park. The d existing basketball court, we can convert that and make that permanent pickleball court if we decide to do that then the basketball court could be a temporary pickleball court, which would now make six permanent courts and two temporary courts. So it would, you know, add more if we, if we decide we want to do that. So I think that's a, a possibility. Okay, I have a question. Uh, you said there's significant downtime on the existing courts right now? Uh, well, according Open to the schedule course. we were given to in, in July, July yeah. before yeah. these leagues came up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is there a um, certain period of the day that is open continuously and is that also a function of the fact that this summer has been one of the hottest that we've right. had 
people aren't going to play pickleball in 95 degree weather. No, they were. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> then you are, then you need to do the Phoenix. <laughs> but, I, but I'm, I'm saying, is is there a direct correlation between when the the the, the, the times are open um, and when, uh, during this, uh, certain periods periods of the day? I mean. Yeah, I mean there were days that it. I mean. Mostly there, afternoons are open. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I would imagine it's a morning function. I mean, it's cooler. It's, you know, more people like to come out in the morning than play in the afternoon. Right. Would, it, would it be four courts? Do you know off the top of your head what it costs the town to put those four courts in? I believe it's about 186000 Right. Yeah. For the, for the pickleball course, not not the skate park, just the pickleball. Yes, it's, it's just the pickleball park. Yeah, okay. it was around there. Yeah. Okay, I'm, 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 uh, you say we we're going to talk tennis. I didn't, I didn't see tennis on it here. But the, yeah, it's on there. I think for. Uh, yeah, it's on the yeah, new it's business. On. business. Oh, yeah. under new business. I was looking at the under yeah, business. Right here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Well, that was just for Adams. My question is regarding the high school tennis courts. Okay, how many high school tennis courts are used by the tennis team? during the course of their, because they seem to be the most um, active users of those tennis courts. The two that are the closest towards the Board of Education building don't seem to be used much at all. Is, is that my, that's my general impression. Uh, Am I, I right or wrong? I on that can't one? tell you what the tennis team does, but I can tell you though, the school's policy is that when school's in session, nobody can play tennis up there, even if they're not using the courts. Okay. They don't allow them up there. In fact. I got a call from somebody that the police were actually called because a couple of senior citizens were playing tennis up there and you're asked to leave. Okay. The school is in session, even though it's and not it's near the, the same school. at Lakes. Yes, it's the same yeah. Lakes and Adams. It's school life. Yeah, except at Adams. Adams, they do a lot of that. Right. Well, that's, that's right. That's right. right. That's right. That's right. That's right. But that's, I guess, far enough away or right. it's a different access point. It's owned by the park and rec. Yeah. But I mean, it's, well, it's, it's a similar situation. All right. So, um, do we feel that we have enough information, or I should say the commission, do we feel that we have enough information right now to make a suggestion <laughs> to switch up Bittner the way that we discussed over the summer, or do you still have questions um, that we would need to? And then, Rick. <laughs> well, my question is, will this have to go through capital? Right, that's... I mean, we're... Oh, yeah. I mean, we're... We're, we're not in operating funds to go and start converting courts. And as far as, um, before anyone speaks up from the audience, because this is not public time, um, the COVID funds are not just to be, we can't just say, oh, we'll use COVID funds. Um, that is something that we have to take our plans and bring it to first selectmen um, and the first selectmen um, group. I can't even speak to the board. The board, the thank board you. Of, of the board, board of selectmen. Yeah, yeah. um, to see, because money is being allocated in different places, though they may have said to us at the beginning when the COVID funds came that you have this amount of money to do this project, that doesn't necessarily mean that we still have that money allocated to that, especially because we have turned down other products, um, projects to do other things, so money has gotten switched. So we can't just sit here and assume that we have COVID money for it. So we have to follow the proper channels of, you know, going through, um, suggesting it, checking the budget, and then checking with them to see if the funds come from our capital, if they come from COVID. Um, so it's not just a snap our fingers and we're going to get bitten or done, which I really wish it was. <laughs> yeah. I well, and that. I think part of it has to be to, it would have to include that s skate park shift. And so right. I don't know if you already got a quote for that. Uh, I don't yeah, remember. Yeah, We've talked about that before right. in other scenarios yeah. as well. Um, and so I wanted to be sure we're not creating a different problem. Now right. we have 40 skateboarders come here from some meetings, right. but now we change the skate park around. So I, I, anytime I've gone up there and just been anybody been skateboarding, I've asked them. And unfortunately, one time I was there, it was two young people. One of them was from California. <laughs> <laughs> so he didn't care, you know. But. Um, <laughs> um, and, and so his input, you know, but, but I just said, so if this were chase, if you still had the proper space, but you didn't have the space around it, you know, his opinion was, yeah, it wouldn't be any problem. And another guy I talked to is pretty much the same thing. But I want to go there more when there are more people skateboarding. I want to make sure they understand if we do this, 
it would have an impact on the again the main function is the ramps nothing would change with that the distance they need to get the right speed in between mm -hmm. and actually when we when we originally built the skate park that's the direction it used to go anyway right. it used to go perpendicular to what it is now I forgot why we changed it but um, they would just lose the they wouldn't have that space behind it to do with the the ground stuff they'd like to do so um, Again, the main thing is the ramps, and they, nothing would change there. It would just be a different direction. Okay. So, and again, Mike Ott, who's a, an engineer, he and I were up there. He's the one who designed the pickleball courts, and we measured out. And he, he, his opinion was if we did that, we could still fit a basketball court, fit the skate park, and then and have the current basketball court be a pickleball court. And then I would suggest we do that. Maybe we put a fence up, because the problem they have now is the ball's running into the skate park, and, and we could try to do a nets and things, but I think that we would... Put up a fence. No, no. no. moving it over. Just move it over to the south a little bit. Keep it there. I, I would just make a suggestion before we start moving around skate park. The skate park people are pretty um, independent folks, and they like what they like. Yeah. If we don't ask them what they like, right. it'll be a waste of time and money if we move stuff around and they don't use it. Um, and, and there's potentially something that we can't see that they see in there about mm -hmm. the use of it if you right. have just a little right. yeah, so I think with all I think yeah. it seems like with all of these things we are want to be accommodating to everybody's enthusiasm right. right. about all right. these things going on but but with um, I know that I understand that the timings changed since that paper that that schedule went right. around um, so we need to look at that but I think we need to you know, pull in these other pieces and figure out because it's part of a bigger plan. We don't want to move one piece and then everything else all falls over apart. Yeah. And 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 also with the funding, so it seems like a bigger project than just painting. And what about the suggestion for adding courts at Adams? Put in four well, brand new courts there. We uh, we wanted to. <laughs> What we wanted to, what did we want to add? That, well, we were originally going to, we were going to build them there, but we couldn't. Yeah, but it had to right. do with the ground, ground. right? Uh, the ground against yeah. the neighbors, yeah. Um, and there was an issue with the neighbors, yeah. yeah. And so um, we we shifted to, to Bittner instead. Okay. But getting back to Bittner, Bittner expressed his opinion before. I mean, Bittner Park up there, it's not broke. So we're going to, are we going to fix something that's not broke? I mean, it's working fine now. we got four pickleball courts, we got a basketball court, and we have a skate park, and it's not broken. So why are we trying to fix it? I think you know we got. Like I said before, we got four. We've got four pickleball, pickleball courts. Every I, I great. I appreciate your enthusiasm for the sport, but come on, I mean, four pickleball courts we just put in. We all need to relax and see how it goes for the next year. And plus, you know, the schedule was showing that people weren't using it at a certain times. So we just can't start throwing money at it because people want more pickleball courts. I mean, it's a lot of money. Well. But I, yeah. think, I do think that there's, there was showing when it was open, so we don't know that people weren't using it at those right. times. It just means something wasn't scheduled. So I think yeah. it's important for us to know a little better, mm -hmm. you know, and maybe it, summer is different than fall if it's crowded, you know, like, I, yeah, I don't know how we do that because I can't go sit there. <laughs> there <laughs> <all> <laughs> for, but it would be great to it just really see because there might be yeah. just, you know, waves of times when people come. I know, but it's hard to justify. I mean, not everybody, play pick, not everybody plays pickleball courts. We've already put four in. And now, how are we going to justify right away we're going to put more in? I mean, I, mean, I get that. Up just talking about the, the timing, that the, 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 the schedule yeah. of time doesn't necessarily represent yeah. time when there's nobody there. But I think it's hard with just the information we have yeah. to be definitive about what yeah. is the best solution and everything. Lawrence, I, I would just have to say, uh, what we do here, everything is evolving. When I first moved into town, Little League in, was king. Little League is decimated right now. We don't have yeah, yeah. more than five adult, I'm sorry, five uh, big league teams, 12-year-old teams, okay? Um, lacrosse surpassed them. Soccer used to be ahead of Little League. Soccer has moved down yeah. because travel programs have taken away better players and moved them into a travel program where they don't play here in town. They yeah. play elsewhere. So we're in a situation right now where we have something that's evolving in a positive sense that we have to react to, okay? It's it's not like, um, oh shoot, now we gotta make more pickleball. No, if, if we need more pickleball courts, we should investigate the, the cost of doing it and say you know, we are reacting to what is happening with the with the people who are um, are using it. Um, you know, same thing with basketball. We used to have lots of, we used to have night basketball <laughs> and we don't have night basketball anymore. But I would have to say public opinion was very favorable in order for us to keep the basketball courts 
up at the police station. So the fact that we have audience participation here gives me a better sense of the idea that it is more necessary than less necessary. And that's how I, I view this right now, that we should keep, we're gonna have to budget for it. We're gonna, but it's not gonna happen overnight. Um, the, the, it just ain't gonna happen overnight. Well, so Rick, I think, I mean, a few things still need to happen. We obviously see that there is a want and a need. Yep. Um, we've got the league starting. We still have Stephanie's program going. Um, you know, we have someone using tennis courts and is, you know, willing to run on Tuesdays and Thursdays with that. Um, we need to find out about the, um, if we were to shift the skate park. Safety, room, is it feasible to do it? Yeah. Um, we also need to talk to the Board of Selectmen on um, just a, even a general conversation. Does this come out of capital? Is this something that we're going to have to budget for and bring it up next year? You know, be one of our first projects done. Um, or if this is able to have COVID funds if there are still some. So if we, I don't think it's a shutdown conversation. It's not a, we're not gonna do it. Um, there's definitely some investigation that needs to be done. We hear that there's the need and the want for it, which I think is great. Um, and then the other problem, um, not problem, the other thing we have to talk about is um, answering John on um, giving money for the posts so that he can fix the nets and use that those extra nets on Tuesday, Thursdays yeah. at. Yeah, we, we buy those, we keep them, keep them in here and um, you know, people can borrow, I guess you borrow them from us. You have my $20, I have your yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like that's a net effect. We we'll have to work on that. <laughs> well, but here, here's so another. That one does not need us to, to do, anything. Um, do anything about okay. that. That we one can take that office yeah. can handle. Okay, okay so, great. So, John, a, you'll talk to Rick. Rick, and you guys will coordinate. Here's another suggestion that I would recommend for, for the pickleball courts. If, if you're having to schlep around these um, nets on a daily basis, we literally used to have lockers at the backstops of, of the fields so we could keep the bases in there, we could keep other equipment in there. Uh, I, can just, I can tell you right now that the Cox, Cox is gone. The Little League is not using that Correct. anymore. That's what we, we determined mm -hmm. last one. Yeah. So there, the, I know there are a couple of um, um, work boxes that are there that could be used. We could pick up transport and put them where the pickleball area so you, you can store your equipment in there. Um, that's just a thought that rather than moving them back and forth and trying to remember who was the last person who had them. Yeah, and we, they, they, we, actually, we do have one at Bittner. We okay. Do for, for the portable nest areas, so it's locked Fantastic. Up. Yeah. So uh, I'm just saying that if we're going to expand this, we should yeah. look at the idea of having an expansion of locked facilities for it as well. Rick, you have your homework on that one. Yeah, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to get a hold of, uh, it's, it's a um, crane slash company that has, you know, big uh, forklifts that move the skate park, that skate park equipment. I'll get a cost to do that. I'll get a cost to um, uh, re to paint and stripe a basketball court and put two hoops up uh, or reuse the hoops we have and then to repaint where the, bas the basketball court is now to pick a ball and put a fence up in between. I'll, I'll get all those prices. Excellent. So what should we do about finding out the skateboard is it going to be okay yeah I'll, well every time I go up I, and I'll go have to figure that out. And it's talk better. to people who are there is there a um, there's nothing through park and rec um, that does skateboarding up there there's no correct? organized no group organized. There's okay. no. um, and there it's kind of hard because the times that it's mostly going to be used by the broader group is going to be after school mm -hmm. and probably between five and eight or now five and seven and um, weekends weekends, you know, weekends. Yeah. a lot of you some weekends um i'm just thinking of who could go up there during that time and well i'll go as often as i can and i'll send staff up there with you know if i can't get up and um and is it if also any commissioners are there just you know ask could we use social media as well oh absolutely to ask um, skateboard families. I mean, I I can name a bunch of my students that are there that I could have parents. Sure. It isn't just questions. skateboarding too. It's kids with bikes too. Right. Yeah. Bikes. Scooters, little, little scooters. Bikes. Yes. Yeah. Um, Somebody has a question, Claire. Yeah. Um, I know you got your own little plans going on, and you're going to move a lot of stuff around. But if you go up there, and I'm up there a lot, um, it'd be 
five days a week sometimes. The basketball courts are the real issue up there. No one uses the basketball courts. One guy, the only guy I see, he's about 30 years old, he goes up there, he plays by himself, and no one uses the basketball courts. Uh, I love basketball. I supported the basketball courts staying where they are because I think it's a great location because they're there. But no one uses the basketball court. I challenge you to go up there at any time and find anybody playing on basketball courts. Yeah. And that would be a better solution because you wouldn't be fighting the skateboard people and no one uses it. But that's a good question. Mm -hmm. It is. Yep. Mm -hmm. And we can add that to the question. But it's all because yeah. there are times where I know during baseball that we have parents that take their kids up there to play basketball. There are other kids, the younger kids. Someone's so. always going to be. Right. There's We're never going to please kids. everyone. It's in, not going to have But we have to do our due diligence yep. as this commission to make sure that all needs in this town are met. We're not just focusing on one group. Um, Maybe we can talk to um, Matt about doing a survey <laughs> and sending it out somehow. For um, our skate park? For the use up there of basketball, skate park. Um, just so that we, we're giving everyone a chance to voice. Set up a camera. I was just going right. to say, set up a camera. We could also do that do too. If, um, see the, the camera yeah, the coming and right. going. We're allowed to do yeah. that. I don't know. <laughs> it may be a very boring uh, video. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know. We'll see a lot of our friends playing pickleball. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just get away. <laughs> um, but just to find a way that we can make sure everyone's voice is <coughs> so that no one can come yeah. back and say. Yeah, we don't want it to become a basketball right. court no. drama like we but have. No, no, no. Absolutely absolutely not. Not. The, the, the original the design of Bidner Park, when I first moved into town in, in 83, it was a multi-purpose facility. Mm -hmm. right. We are trying to put... And it's come a long everything. way. It's come a long way. Right. Um, but if it's true that you know the, the basketball is not the primary function up there, right. something can be sacrificed. But again, we, we need to, need to find, find that out 100%. Put the camera <laughs> so, um, does everyone feel comfortable on Absolutely. the situation that we. Rick's going to find out costs. We're going to find out a way to make sure that everyone's voice is heard. Um, and then it will be an ongoing, and it's definitely one of our top projects because it's a hot topic. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone, for coming on that. You are more than welcome to continue and stay for the rest of our meeting. Um, thank you for coming. I just had just one thing, a suggestion. Check with other towns and see what they're doing. Because mm -hmm. I've seen some major, major expansions with pickleball with other towns in the surrounding areas. Yes. Now, County Madison, they're doing nothing. <laughs> no, they're doing nothing. Yeah, but other towns, I think it would be a good suggestion just to see what they've gone through mm -hmm. and how they've addressed it. Madison put in cornhole and horseshoes. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's great. Great. That, 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 that is a wildly crazy I was going to say cornhole. Thank you. 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 Right. Full court? So you can make two single courts. Yeah, in the police department. Police department, they play yeah. all yeah. I've never seen them doing double courts. Mm -hmm. I've always seen single court. So maybe you can make two single courts, keep the basketball alive, mm -hmm. and the leftover space, maybe you right. can beat one or two uh, single courts. We're hoping. Yeah. Fingers crossed. All right. Thank Thanks you. So Good to see you. Thank you. Oh, sure. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, sure. Right. No, that's yeah. outdated anyway. <laughs> I don't know. We can get stuff done, yeah. yeah. That's but awesome. It's helpful. Well, yeah. It's helpful. All right, so um, back to our agenda. We're going to um, go back to number three, correspondence. Um, there's one from Rick to Matt. Um, about the quotes for the lights at Adams. We'll mm -hmm. talk about that when we're talking about um, new business B, so we put that aside. Um, and then there's one from Penny Half um, that we need to discuss about an Adirondack chair or a bench. That's, yeah, it's under new business. Too. And under new business, so we can put that one aside. So moving right along to the approval of August 1st meeting minutes. Okay. I will, um, any questions, changes? Mm -hmm. okay. um, 
Yes. Yeah, so, okay. And then all in favor? I was not the meeting. Yeah, I was the meeting. Yeah, I was the meeting. So, Lauren. I was there. I was during the same part, the voting. Yeah, you were there for you were yeah. there. That's I how we got it. All right, so Lawrence and I abstained. <laughs> Everyone else approved? Yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. That's right. Moving yeah, right along to the expenditures for where did I do them? Oh. For the month of August. Um, can we get a motion to approve? Uh, just one quick question. Um, yep. The kiosk right now there. Um I'm sorry, I'm, I'm being a little dumb about this, but did we say that we were going to accept the cost of running that into perpetuity? Or was that going to be a town um, absorbing the cost? Uh, we've, been, we've been asked yeah. and directed to, to pay for that. I think we've been doing it for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I remembered, I know it's been, I was looking back on some of the old bills and I know it's there, but I seem to remember when they first came to us to, to request it that we were sacrificing some parking spots but I thought it was an exchange for the fact that the town was going to handle the costing of it. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'm sorry, but I just, I just had a. Uh, it's not that much money. It's eighty dollars, but uh, it, it's still something that jumped out at me. I also looked at the um, water cost at Jacobs. Yeah. Right. It's now like five thousand dollars. Yeah. So that's probably just for. Uh, one month, so maybe it was two months then. For uh, it's seasonal. seasonal. It it's seasonal. seasonal. Yeah. So yeah, May to July. Oh, this is. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. For and so the next that. one would oh, be May August to through like October or something. Mm-hmm. What's that? So what page is that? That's uh, page. What is it? Page two. Page two. So that's what yeah, the splash. Yeah, these utilities near the bottom part. Mm -hmm. Does the um, does the splash <coughs> pad have its own water meter? But, no, not splash pad, but but the domestic water, which also includes the, the toilets, the okay. showers. So the splash pad is included in the in the other the functions yeah. of, of the Jacobs Beach yeah. location. Yeah. Okay, so it doesn't have a separate um, meter then. Okay. Just right. so I'm clear on this, it's like almost seven grand for May, June, July, for three months for, for Jacobs Between Beach? Irrigation. Between, Between irrigation, irrigation and, and, and the... the yeah. And that's the bathrooms, the showers. Right. Yeah. Irrigation and the splash pad. Right. Yeah. So, 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 Rick. So, for three months, how much did the splash pad add to the uh, to the, to uh, the water? I, I don't know because it's not it's not separated out. It's you know it's all included with the bathrooms and the showers down there. So I, I don't know, but I can. Do you give a ballpark? Could compare to last year uh, that yeah. time period. My guess, maybe. Three net, three thirty five hundred to four thousand of it. Which we thought we yeah. which right. estimated. We budgeted. Okay. Estimated. okay. We did. Yeah, I was and the the money that was raised for it in, in that that large anonymous donation, there's enough money there to help cover the cost probably for three or four years of the okay. water. So, at the end, what's going to happen at the end of the year? Um, Mary Jane, the the finance director, will she and I will talk. We'll say how, how do we do in utilities, and if we're over. It will take that money to cover it. If we're not, then the budget covered it anyway. It doesn't right. really matter, you know. But um, but there is money to cover yeah. it should it mm -hmm. set us over. Right. Rick, may I ask what is on page two underneath Bittner? Um, what's GCC? It says GCC July to August, and then Guilford it's Community Center. Uh -huh. Which one is it? Is it? Is it under under the oh, there, uh, Has it always been? Right? Yeah, that's uh, that's gas. That's the community center. Yes. <laughs> Does does it, it look different? Why does it look different? GCC. I don't know. Tara and I are like, what is that? I'm like, I don't think it's ever been abbreviated like that. So okay. Like, I, I just looked. Just, okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Thank you. One, but that's okay. That's all right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good question. It's better to ask. And uh, just another quick question on the top of page <laughs> four or five. Uh, the irrigation for Guilford High School and Adams comes out of our recreational budget. Is that correct? That's repairs. That's repairs. Yeah. But that still comes out of our budget, yeah. Rather yeah. than for the high school budget, we do all repairs for all irrigation. Okay, yeah. that's fine. Okay, there's one thing I'll, I'll let you know about on page uh, three. Three. Um, that's the middle section of things. We looked at like the second to last line, regatta. Mm -hmm. That's not cheese. <laughs> that's all the lasagna here. Yeah, that's a lot of lasagna. Larry, I was really cooking up a storm. Um, that that was. Um, 
the uh, the dock had to get section of the dock had to get replaced at um, um, Lake Quantipog, but that was actually paid for by a donor. So we had, it came out of our budget, but it's getting restored back to the budget. So it really didn't cost us anything. And that's the book, that's the dock for the uh, for the rolling boats. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. Um, another question is that do you show the revenue generated by passes sold at the beaches? Uh, I believe this is only an expense. This is also yeah. I thought it's only expenses. Yeah. Yeah. We can get that, but um, and I know our beach, we've done very well with beach passes. If you, yeah, yeah, if this, we can have that for about, next month. Yeah. Now, th does that money go uh, directly to offset expenses, or does it go to? Because the general fund. General, general fund of the yeah. town. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, the revenue from, that are generated from beach passes, boat racks, room rentals, picnic pavilion rentals all go to the town budget. We don't get any of it. So it's all what about pickleball money? Does that go to the town budget? Yes, too? we should be no. charging for No, pickleball. anything that's programmed is in our, stays in our no program stuff. account. It's not part of the budget. How many um, kayak racks do we have uh, at Jacobs? Uh, two, about 250, 245. Okay, because I was at um, Surf Club yesterday. At uh, They have 295. So, right on par. Hmm? Surf Club? 295 what? 295 racks. Oh, racks. Kayak racks. So the number that you'd be approving on the last page is the one on the right, the net amount, because there was a, uh, got a refund for something. Um, so it's 180, 172, 87. Can I get a motion to approve the August expenditures? I motion to approve the August expenditures of $180,172.87. Department reports, um, as in the past, I'll take that you guys read them. Mm -hmm. um, if anything stood out that you have a question on, um, or Rick, if something new has come up that you want to add, um, we can discuss that. If not, we will take them as read and move on. I, I do have a question. I'm oh, sorry. I'm, no worries. I missed last month, so I don't know what a Clivus Moltrum Composting. Oh. Oh. <laughs> We're going to talk about that under. Uh, that <laughs> yes. It's off your tongue. Is that here? That <laughs> is out of my wheelhouse. <laughs> that is under unfinished business, so we will enlighten you during then. Oh, thank you. Yes. Oh. I thought maybe we had a naming rights for the <laughs> park uh, bathrooms and, and now. Police report the uh, big belly. That's the garbage can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think the garbage can. Not the garbage. Um, rather than uh, saying something um, about. The report here. I would like to say thanks to Rick for the uh, summer concert series. Mm -hmm. They were just awesome with a capital A. Yeah, and I great. think the town really, really, really enjoys what they do. And mm -hmm. I've been to both here and to our neighbors next door in Madison. And we kick, uh, oh, okay, we surpass participation um, as compared to what they do over next door. And I think our acts and our groups that you selected were infinitely more entertaining than um, the ones that they had over at Madison. Fortunately, we have, a, we have a budget. The budget comes out of the program account. And, and because our programs do well, we have money available for that. And all the special events, the fireworks, all mm -hmm. that comes out of none of its town money. And so we, um, we have probably a better budget than they have, so we don't have to hire just local groups. We can get these tribute bands that definitely draw a crowd, and that's kind of what we've been doing for a long time. Oh, no, it's great. And yeah. It's so appreciated. I mean, the posts on Facebook, the comments just walking around, even my students, did you go? I didn't see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, well, well it's so the fact it, is that, you know, Everyone loves it. I'm there from beginning to end, and nearly 90% of everybody who else uh, is in attendance is there from beginning to end. Yeah. yeah. Um, the only thing I would have to say, we need more porta potties. Well, <laughs> the last one was a, there was a line and I counted 19 people, and they were very patient. <laughs> I'm going to work on, on, on getting permission to use town hall, so we don't have to rent the porta okay. johns. We had to one. It was one time. Yeah. One time we didn't have. Them. I was there. I, 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 
I'm there a lot on Sundays, and I, and I greet the uh, sound guy when they get there. And so around 3 o'clock one yes. day, the sound guy said, uh, hey, Rick, where are the bathrooms? Is it, the port is out there right over. Oh, they're not there. They were there on Friday. They weren't there on Sunday. It was a mistake. Uh, it, you know, we, we, we corrected it. It was a mistake with the, a mistake with the Porter John Company. But I scrambled around. I got permission to open Town Hall. In, in an hour and a half, I hired, got a guy willing to work. So I brought one of our custodians in to be at Town Hall to just be there, make sure nobody went to any other part of the building, that they keep an eye on Diane's office there and <laughs> make sure that they didn't go upstairs. And um, it turned out it was good because that was the Motown concert mm -hmm. and they needed to, a place to change. Because I also had a custodian here because we thought you were going to come here to change. Uh, and so I had to hire two custodians and he, the guy here did other work anyway. But um, I, I, it, it worked well. And so I think that, um, to your point, I think that if we can get a, uh, agreement with Matt to just use the town hall and we'll hire one of our people, it's less expensive to hire right. one of our people to, than paying for the Porter and Johns anyway mm -hmm. and, and have the bathrooms. Uh, how many facilities? Yeah, like uh, there one men's room and one lady room? Yeah, but I think there, but there's so multiple, there's multiple stalls. stalls. Okay. There's yeah. three. There I've only been in there once. I don't know about the other one. Yeah. Right. There's more than having two porters out. Two for sure. Yeah. 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 Okay. And they're nicer. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's for yes. sure. So, awesome. yeah, so that's definitely a valid point because um, somebody called me that Monday and said they left because there were no bathrooms. They had to go. Yeah. Okay. And I said, ah, I announced at the beginning that we were using yeah. Town Hall. Um, oh, we got there after the announcements. And so they didn't know, but. I mean, is St. George, I mean, I know you can't, everybody can't keep going to all these places, but like, is St. George open sometimes? Uh, theirs are smaller than town hall. Yeah, but I also worry about, like, the future of, like, septic systems getting overused. I mean, that's a, mm -hmm. that's a thing, too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have to think of those things as well, but, yeah. But we'll see. I mean, if that, you know, I made a note for next year to talk, you know, about as an mm -hmm. option. If they say no, then we'll just get more important to jobs. Right, yeah. Yeah. Continue that or way. use both and just supplement each other. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. right. And, and I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just being a little uh, crazy too. But if we could put the porta potties in the parking lot of the town hall rather than on the green, I just, just think it looks better. Yep. Right there. But, uh, <laughs> oh no! I mean, you just put them right next to the take some parking spaces. Yeah, yeah. right. You take a couple yeah. parking spaces, yeah. but it. Um, but wasn't the plan to try to, during that time to keep them? there the whole time yeah. mm -hmm. so that we weren't paying the removal we'll and everything. Them. Well, if we yeah. did that in the parking lot, then yeah. there would be an it, issue. It right. sound like a great idea to use town hall bathrooms after hours. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in there that people should not have yeah, access maybe to. Yeah, maybe an issue. I mean, who knows if it'll be Right, but it's a question. It's an ask right. that, all I mean, the well, locked. Locked. all the offices are locked. Yeah. 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 They put a gate across going upstairs, so you can't yeah. go upstairs. Yeah. Yeah. Door yeah. closed, yeah. 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 I actually think it's, but if they're porta potties, I do think it's better. I feel like it's fine on the green. The green, they, uh, okay. they're, they're, they're kind of out of the way where they yeah. are. I don't know. They just had the closer to free ride porta potties. There was like mm -hmm. 10 of them delivered, there. But, they de but the poor guys, they delivered them in front of town hall. And then yeah, we all walked in, and of course, you know, parents like, oh my gosh, those aren't supposed to be there. So they had to move them all to the other side of the green. I felt yeah. so bad. For yeah. It took like all day. Mm -hmm. but, uh, well, yeah. in summary, I hate to say it, summer's over, and I'm not going to miss the concerts yeah. on the green. Thank so. you. Yeah. Well, so I, I did get requests for Steely Dan again next year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking of going best of next year, the best of the last five years. Yeah, yeah. 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 That'd, be, that'd be good. Yeah. All right, um, agenda seven reports commission um, standing fields. That's John and Rick. Standing fields. Okay, we have a couple things going on here. Um, number one, and I think you talked about it last month, but I wasn't here for it. Uh, Standing Fields is having um, requests from the football club to install permanent lights at Long Hill. Oh, the youth football. For youth football. Yeah. Rather than using the portable generators, which do two things. They generate noise and they generate pollution. Mm -hmm. So um, Standing Fields doesn't have a problem with it. So it's actually going to revert back to our board as to whether or not we want to move forward with it. Um, now, if I remember correctly, football was going to contribute to this. Is that correct? Or yeah, I think they will. Yeah. Because they're already paying for their own lights right now with the generators. Um, but it, it, it's a concept that we have to discuss to see whether or not we would allow that to move forward. It's under uh, unfinished business. Okay. 
Uh, the second thing is with regard to uh, Little League, and it's also under unfinished business, looking for a 5070 permanent baseball field. Um, the, 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 the prospect was presented that the Bittner B field, which is the lower field for the baseball, be used as a 5070 field and that a temporary fence be installed in the ground and it can be picked up at the end of the season uh, so that now they don't have to go through and adjusting the field at any time, any weekend, they want to use the Adams field, which can cause some damage to the bases, can damage to the field. Um, again, from a standing fields committee, that's their recommendation is that they use the Bittner B field. Um, the A field is too short for the um, athletic ability of the kids that would be playing on the field. Uh, because that permanent fence that's out there is um, is not regulation. It's only like 180 feet where you need at least 200 to 225 feet for an outfield fence. Um, softball Little League has also requested the opportunity to put a, a, a temporary fence um, on the Bittner C field, which now I, I've, I've worked with these before at um, the Pratt and Whitney complex up in East Hartford. Uh, what you do is you take a post, you, you have a post, you sink it in the ground, you put another post in there, and then you unroll the fence. Mm -hmm. um, which it's it's um, it's not like a wooden snow fence, but it's it's like one of the plastic DOT fences that you see on the highways. Um, and so consequently, at the end of the season, they would just be rolled back up and put into storage. The post would remain in the ground. Uh, simply because you don't want to keep digging them up and putting, put because that causes damage to the, to the field and also to the equipment as well. Um, again, Standing Fields doesn't see any problem about doing that, uh, especially in the light of the fact that girls softball this past season had a remarkable season uh, with regard to the high school team um, and also with regard to Little League uh, with their cooperative team that they had with East Haddam because they, they won their district, they moved on to the regionals, and they, I think they even won the regionals, um, if I remember correctly. They were, they, they were heading towards the state championship when they, when they lost, lost out. Um, but those were the, the, the other things uh, that, are, that had come up is that the baseball diamond at the Cox School uh, will not be used for any formal Little League programs in the future. So that soccer field, which is now going through an irrigation process, uh, is going to remain dedicated soccer. And the Little League field will be used for recreational purposes for the students at the Cox School, which is the same as the, the, the diamond at the Leeds School will not be used by Little League for any formal programs other than uh, maybe t-ball um, or for recreation for the students at the lead school. Um, so the, there was a lot going on uh, with, with standing fields. There, there's um, the, again, we are adjusting our needs based upon what's happening in the town. Uh, Little League itself is, comp is compressing the 5070 program for the more athletic kids is expanding. Okay, um, the diamond, the big diamond up at the uh, the Adams School for the uh, for the middle school and for for bigger kids, that's not going to be changed at all. Uh, but that field is necessary for the next level of play beyond little league. Um, so, <coughs> baseball and softball has a little bit of a renaissance this past year. We like to hope to keep it moving forward. Um, and it all depends. When you have a good program, it brings more kids in. Okay. When things go into the doldrums, uh, I don't want to play softball. I don't want to play Little League. I watched they were doing practicing uh, for a Little League up, uh, softball up at Lakes when I was coming down here. So there, there's still interest in it. And um, hopefully the, we can keep moving forward with it. 
Did I miss anything? It, it, just one thing I'll add is the, the backstop at Long Hill Park. Uh, we have a net yes. on the winter because the net that's up above the backstop is it's just torn and tattered. And I have um, a, a quote from uh, Bar the Trees to come and cut those branches back, and they're actually going to hang the net for us too. So uh, we'll get that done as soon as the net comes in. They'll do it this and fall. The high school he primarily uses that yeah. one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that the Long Hill field is primarily for uh, sub varsity play for baseball. Baseball has their own varsity field, sub varsity. <coughs> um, Rick, nothing else to add? Standing fields? Move no. Move on to green commitments? Yeah. Uh, green committee is meeting on Wednesday, uh, but we finally have some movement. We, we've got the plaque ordered for the millstone on the green. That's ordered, and when it comes in, it'll get put in. Um, we're, um, uh, we're getting quotes for the installation of the benches, the six new benches that we got. We've had the benches for four or five months now. Um, but uh, we, we need to get them installed, but then the brickwork that goes under it. So we're getting quotes from the okay. uh, different contractors for that. I just got the information for that, and I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get those quotes. Oh. We'll make it happen. Um, Land acquisition law is not here, so we will skip over that one. Splash pad. Um, I only heard great things, or I chose to only hear great things. <laughs> <laughs> um, this summer, every time I was at Jacobs, um, it was nice to see all ages using it, um, young and old, um, including myself. So with, a, with no children, I used it. Mm -hmm. um, but did you have any other? We finally got the booster pump. It just came in last Yay! week. We had oh, ordered it, we got it. Yeah, so I mean, we'll put it in, but it's not gonna be right. really functional till the next <laughs> year now. And so Ellen and I were talking a little bit. I think, you know, we never had a grand opening. We had the soft opening, it, but, I think next spring we do a dedication or something, mm -hmm. you know, and make it kind of a big event, and, and then hopefully the turtle will work and uh, everything will be good. But the, the booster pump just came in last week, finally. Um, and uh, the contractor has to come back. A lot of the grasses were the, the only reason we kept that snow fence up was to keep kids from walking on and destroying yeah. the grasses. We thought by now they should be growing, but we had a drought, and the contractor never, never in the responsibility to come back and water it weekly. They never did. And so, you know, it was the biggest drought we've had in who knows how many decades. And um, so they know that they're going to have to probably replant a lot of those this fall. So um, we withheld, I think, $14,000, so they haven't been paid yet for the project. So they, they you know, we held that till that gets done. Yeah, when I, I walk back and forth with the kayak racks, and I walk, of course, over by the splash pad. It's kind of disappointing. There's an inordinate amount of, like, people leave coffee the cups there and they leave clothing there they leave kids toys there it's just like I, I go over there I'm like what is going on it, you, it clear am I right it's, it's everywhere it, though like I've walked on the green mm -hmm. Jacobs um, Lake Winnipeg I see the same thing it's like, yeah, no, it's, it's, pick it's it up yeah. pick it up yep makes um, me sad yeah, uh, clear we so we decided a Guerrero is going to be um, putting bricks under the benches Okay. Because we thought it's going to be a maintenance nightmare. We're not going to be able to mow it. Right. And when people actually sit on those benches, it's going to be all dirt and muck underneath there. So there's going to be bricks right where the where the splash pad ends to the bench and then to the back of the bench. Okay. So that'll all be brickwork underneath. They're the same bricks that are on the walkway going up. And he has them. Um, and I um, uh, got an email from him today that I hope, hopefully in the next week or two he's going to get out there and, awesome. and uh, put them out. Uh, there's one other thing that we need to talk about with regard to standing fields, and this is unfortunately a little regrettable, is that the, the field that uh, the athletic turf that's over by uh, New England Road is having some issues with regard to tearing again. The practice one? It's not the practice. Upper field? The upper yeah, field. Yeah. The multi-purpose upper field. Yeah. Um, it is the, um, the turf is pulling away from the anchors. That is, and the anchors are the ones that are over by the New England Road, that, that stretch over there. And so consequently, um, Paul, Paul, Schmidt. Paul Schmidt is in the process of investigating the ramifications of getting the contractors back out there. But unfortunately, we may be facing a situation where the warranty of the work that they did when they, um, I can't say that word, um, messed up the first time may be expired. So that's part of the uh, investigation that he has to do. So 
it's the field is playable. It's not like we had before <coughs> where the seams ripped in the middle and we had grass growing in the middle of an artificial field. That's not happening. It's just that the 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 the, the, the green turf is pulling away from the anchors that they have up at the top. The southern part or the the the, the, the lower part of the field is in good shape. And the rest of the field is in there good shape. There was a rip on the forty five yard line, but they came and they repaired that before the big lacrosse tournament. Um, uh, in the spring, and that seems to be holding out, but yeah, to John's point, it's pulling us out away, and it's been like that for, uh, when did I guess discover it, last March maybe? And uh, the contract has not come back to fix it, and so it may get beyond, it, it may go legal. Yeah. Now, the other thing that we talked about with the fields is that we, we sent a request to the um, uh, to the athletic department that uh, during the winter time uh, that they do not use amateurs to try to remove snow from the field or from the track because using snow shovels on grass fields can rip seams. So if, if there's snow on the field, God put it there, God's going to take it away. And they're not to use any type of equipment to try to, uh, to clean on it up. On the track as well? On the track as well. And that, that goes for any of the fields, um, especially the artificial fields, because you, you just get one snow shovel that goes in right. and hits a seam, yeah. the thing is going to unravel just like a, as the proverbial cheap suit. Okay. Um, moving right along to number eight, unfinished business. Ah, Jacob Septic. No report. No, I got nothing to report on yet. <laughs> We're still waiting for, okay. It's still unfinished. Fabulous. So it's hasn't moved. Um, so it will stay there. Um, unfinished item B, disc golf course expansion. So David Carroll came here two meetings ago, I think, to he was the boys Eagle Scout that was going to add the, the long baskets. They're done. Uh, he finished them a week, two weeks ago, possibly. Uh, and then the Coast Guard got back in touch with me. They're coming at the end of September, and they're going to finish the rest of the long tees. So when that's done, the long course is done. Wow. And Great. We could probably take it off the agenda because it's going to be, be weird not to have it on there. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you to the um, Eagle Scouts and um, Coast Guard Coast because Guard, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. All of that got done. Um, well, we can skip over C requests for pickleballs. We've talked about that. Um, request for lights at Long Hill Park for Guilford Youth Football and Cheer. So, in your packet, there should be the budget estimate. Uh, Paul Schmidt and John Kennedy. John's the chair of the field committee. Paul's vice chair now. Uh, we met out there with a representative from Musco. Um, we talked about some ideas, and um, and so he, he gave a couple estimates here. Um, and I, I, I discussed these uh, with um, Ken Alberti, who's the uh, president of um, youth football. So one option is the, the, the middle option, or half of the youth football field, the $95,000. Let me say first that this is just for the lights and poles. It doesn't include bringing electricity in. I mean, that all of the extra, uh, whatever that cost is. But because um, there's probably not enough power there to draw from the parking lot lights or from the building to, to light up the field. But this, when he says half of the 300 by 150 football field, um, so if you if you have your back to the barn and to the right where the the uh, goalpost is for the football goalpost, mm -hmm. there'd be two lights on that end of the field, shining toward the field. Um, and it would be mainly not for game quality lighting, but for practice. It would be better than the portable lights I have now. Um, and so I asked him, well, how much would we really get lit up? And I think, I think what he's going to have to do is create a, a lighting scheme and show us how far is the light's going to go. Would it light up? He, he was telling me on the phone today, probably enough to light up all the back field, where there are two practice fields in the back there enough to light that up for practice. Okay, well, I want to see the foot candles, you know. Right. Um, that's the least expensive option. The other one, um, the, uh, the first one's half of the soccer field. That would be two poles along the parking lot, um, shining toward the field, you know, lighting up um, the front half of that soccer field. And then you had a phase two it says youth football, two poles with lights on two fields. So I asked, okay, where are you, where are you thinking about those lights? Those would be um, on the other side of the soccer field, like between the soccer field and the practice of football fields, and it would be lights 
shining on the soccer field and then lights on the other side shining on the football fields. So kind of down the middle where they kind currently of, yeah. put the generators. Yeah, mm -hmm. right, right. Um, and it would do both. So I, th I think if, if you want us to pursue this, I think that I, I'd like to have him give, him give a lighting plan because he did the exact thing that I'm talking about when we talk about Adam's uh, basketball court. He gave me a, um, a foot candles plan that shows exactly what it's going to look like, mm -hmm. how, much, you know, how much it lit up. And if, if we ask him to do something like that with all these options, then we have a better idea of what we want to do. Um, in one of the conversations with, with Ken Alberti today, I said, if, for example, we go with the $95,000 option, if we do it anything, but if we do that one, you know, maybe youth football rents two lights or something instead of eight or ten or whatever they get now. It may not be enough to light up what they want to light up, you know, but maybe we light up a, a good chunk of it, but if they, want, if they need more light, they might have to still rent, you know, for $2,000 or three instead of 10000 and get, you know, two or three lights, not ten of them. So I think those are... We got to look. We still got to figure all this out. Right, you, you, met, you met up there with who? Paul Schmidt and uh, John Kennedy. They're the field committee, and then uh, representative from Musco. That's the lighting company. Okay. They're the premier company, pretty okay. much all over the country for yeah. sports lighting, and uh, they have state bids. They have the state contract, so you know we, we would we, we wouldn't have to bid it out. They could you know they could do it. They have the contract, um, but they're they're the experts. Find out the cost of then bringing the electric in and all that. We'd have to talk to uh, EverSource. And get that cost. My question is though, like, it seems like a lot more legwork needs to be done. Like, is it is it possible for that? And I don't know, but in other words, to look for alternatives. In other words, somebody says, let's put some lights up there. All of a sudden, okay, we're going to put some lights there. It's like, well, wait a minute. Like, can they possibly practice? Like, how many fields are lighted up at the high school? One. Okay, but is Just it the possible stadium. they could practice? At the football field, I don't know the answer. Might probably, be. probably no, because uh, all the high school sports are practiced up until okay. like nine o'clock okay. at night, and no, all their like, equipment is at Long Hill. They got that, that barn there. They yeah, built yeah. that barn. Everything's there. But you know, we're going to look at you know what's the environmental impact. We have to look out, look at well, what's it going to cost a month? You know, what's the electrical bill going to be? Right. Mm -hmm. Second of all, I mean, the people that live around there, it's not like they moved in next to an airport and now they're complaining about planes are landing. They moved in there when there was no permanent lights but, there have been. but they're they're still dealing with the lights and yeah. they're dealing with the I mean they have complained about the generator sound okay no but, yeah. but to me we have an obligation yeah. oh yeah I mean like if, if I was living there uh, put yourself in them shoes we just can't go over and put some lights here. it has to go to planning zone either be hearing yeah, yeah. Right. okay yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 You know, we yeah. need yeah. gathering information yeah, gather information okay right. okay okay and um, usually when you have a hearing planning zone you, you we if we're the applicants we have to send a Notice to all anybody within a quarter mile, I think. Okay, okay. Uh, okay and thank let them know, you. hey, we're, we want to yeah. let you know we're thinking of putting lights up. Public hearing is going to be on whatever yeah. date. And then, uh, you know, they give us, a, usually the planning department will give us all those addresses and we just write up a letter and we send and them to everybody. And the one thing I will say, because my kids all play football and um, are part of the cheer, they all practice at the same time. So it's not like it's going to be seven days a week, you know, three hours here, three hours yeah, here, yeah. two hours here. They all organize. They practice together at the same time, especially with them having to rent those um, generators. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, they're annoying. all there Tuesday, yeah, yeah. Wednesday, Thursday mm -hmm, right. from 530 to 730. And right now it's getting hard because we had, you know, last week at 7 o'clock it was overcast. You could barely see the kids, yeah. and we didn't have the generators yet. Um, the generators are extremely loud. The coaches, the kids can't always hear the coaches, so it becomes a safety thing, mm -hmm. in my opinion, because mm -hmm. they can't hear the coaches telling them not to do something or to do something. Um, there's times where the generators don't start. Um, they smell. Um, I stand there long enough watching my kids practice, and it stinks. Um, so I'm completely in favor of looking further and finding out what we need and working with youth football to see where they could help out. Um, because they are obviously budgeting right now for lights, mm -hmm. so right. how that plays. Continue to budget something. Right, if right. they continue right. to budget and how that plays in Maybe with us. Maybe they pay for the paying. lights or pay for help the installation costs or they pay the cost. Or the of, expense. Yeah. The right, or the electric bill each. And when you get that footprint, I mean, I assume you'll also find out how they will aim their lights. Right. You know, right. So hopefully it'll be better but, aimed yeah. to not affect neighbors. Think, and you know, that's else. a good point because I, I, I wish I brought the uh, with me the. Um, 
they give me a diagram of what it, when we, we'll talk about more when we get into Adam's tennis courts, but they, they show a typical, uh, I'm sorry, not tennis court, the basketball court. They show one like Adam's lit up and there's almost no light spill outside the court. I'm very, very yeah, it's very directional. And nothing above yeah. it at all. So it's the Dark Skies initiative, it doesn't affect that at all. That's why I said these, these guys are the experts in this right. in the field here yeah. and they know what they're doing. Um, so with this one, like these ones, would it be like, um, at the high school where they push the button and it comes on and it's only on for a certain amount of time? Or is it something that we just put on a timer that, you know, they crank out. it from, yeah. you know, it's on from 5.30 to 7.30 and it shuts off at 8? We'll have to determine how that okay. goes, yeah. yeah so let me flip. It's also just for a certain couple of months, right? Right. Every year, it's not like you know, it, I months. mean, they practice from July to beginning of November, right. really right. end of October. Yeah. Right. No, Claire, I mean, it's definitely, I mean, the the generators, the whole, that's not good. Right. And this is definitely a better alternative. Yeah. But I'm just saying, like, we got to come up with parameters, like, right. what time are these lights are going to be shut? Yep. Yeah. Like, we have to come up with some rules and regs. Okay, the lights are going to be shut off. No, like, they're going to be shut off at seven o'clock. Whatever it is, like, we, we have to come up. And then we got to worry about well, other other people, other sports going to want to use them. And now the neighbors are going from not, lights being on for two months. Now they're going right. to be on for two right. months. We got to take that all into consideration. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I mean, and is there also? Sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just saying. Right now, there must be some regulation with the generated generator lights. Anyway, I mean, some schedule yeah. them on. Yeah. I mean, they they don't have them yet. They're coming. But I mean, they have in the. But in the past, past I mean, all practices have been done by seven thirty. But I mean, which is different than you're right. If they're permanent, then that right. would invite people yeah. to want to use it later. I guess. Sure that, I'm sure that the football does it as a courtesy. I'm sure there's nothing on writing when. The lights have to be turned off, or maybe there is. I don't, I don't know. But there should be something in writing, like so. There's no if ands or buts. Seven o'clock or whatever it is, they got to go off. They're going to be only on this, mm -hmm. you know, this uh, this time of year because yeah, I mean, you don't want lights. I mean, do we have that for other fields? We do. Well, at the tennis courts at the high school, they're off at nine thirty. Right. And if somehow the timer goes wrong or something happens, I hear about it the next day. <laughs> they're on at nine forty-five. Well, I, mean, I know there's times where when I lived over by Guilford Lakes, those. The lights at the tennis court would be on till 10, 11. Yeah. I mean, we drive by and they were still on. Yeah, and they yeah. Were we don't, to we be don't on control those. So yeah, that's the school. From what I understand, yeah, yeah ask the, them to turn it on and then. That's how it is, yeah. Well, they're, they're yeah. automatic on, but they're on a, on a timer inside the school building. That's and they turn them off. Here. By yeah. Yeah. the janitors run the. Right. Um, and Rick, my yeah. other question when we were talking about lights there, um, is there any way, and I don't know if this company does it, to include some kind of solar? I mean, that I, field I've gets that. quite a bit of sun. I, I've asked that because um, I've thought about that maybe at Bittner if we did mm -hmm. something with the uh, pickleball courts up there. Because that, if we want, that's another thing we talk about. If we want to light up there, I mean, we got to bring power all solar. the way from 77 to there. Right. That, that, that would be a pretty big cost. But but I looked into the, or I talked to, to Musco again, who are the, the experts on this, um, about the possibility of solar. And they said there's nothing. The answer is pretty much no. You know, for the amount of lighting they have to put out for an athletic field, there's not enough solar power. Or the panels don't capture enough to, to do that. Um, uh, although some other company who told me they were going to go up there and look at it, who does solar lighting, and they, they were going to get back to me and let me know if it could be done. But but Musco, again, they're kind of the leaders in the industry, right. and they, they didn't they're they they aren't going there yet. Cause there's not enough panels yeah. that can. I capture think enough power. Need so much space. To put the the number of panels yeah. that you would need, yeah. them. and where would that be? Right. right. And we need to. We need to. Obviously, if this process moves forward, we need to physically go out there and say, and you need to tell us, okay, that light is going to go here. It's going to. You yeah. know, we need to get the seed firsthand, as opposed to making decisions based on what's on a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. So I, I will ask them to to now take. You know, they can do a Google Earth thing of of the field there, and with all these options, show us what it would look like. What, what gets lit up and what what is usable space you know with, with whatever again it's very little spillover um, but what would um what would the ninety five thousand dollar option give us it, would it just be that one practice football field and that's it which wouldn't be enough to really right. do it enough yeah. for them or is it the whole backfield but probably not the moldy field up front because that would be the other option there where mm -hmm. they, they had that um and then we also just need, if we when we talked to have a source about bringing in the electricity would that be a separate meter than the current one for the shed, or would they tie them together? Uh, we could ask them to have a separate one. Okay. Yeah, I think it would make sense. That, that's going to be a hefty pull. Yeah. To bring electricity from Long Hill 
Yeah, it's going to be a hefty bill. Um, and then, you know, obviously, I know Ken um, and the rest of the board is happy to have discussions and is willing to help out where they can. So I think keeping communication open with them yep. on, on the plan and everything. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, where are we? Unfinished business E. e. <laughs> Selectman's request to record meetings. Um, so I think we talked about it at the July meeting that um, we he would like our meetings to continue to be recorded for the public. Um, sadly, Peter is moving on from us. Um, <laughs> geez, thanks, Peter. Um, we do have the other room that is wired. Um, but unfortunately, the nights we have meetings, there is yoga, and, and um, that that group has been there for years. Um, I think we briefly talked about whether we would switch nights. It sounded like the consensus was this was the best night in time. We could move it. We could stay on Monday nights and go later. Start at 7:30. It sounded like the commission did not favor that idea. Wait, there's not a there's not a way to swap rooms. But this room smaller. Yeah, it's smaller. Yeah, and all those things in there, all the supplies are in there. Well, tonight well, there was. historically was. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Claire, let me ask you point blank. I mean, mm -hmm. what, what would you like to see? Personally, what would you like to see? Um, I would prefer to stay on Mondays at 6.30 here at the Community Center <laughs> like it's been for the 10 years that I've been on it, just because it works okay. with my schedule now. Right. Um, the, I believe there was another suggestion that we could... Um, possibly move our meeting, keep the meeting the same time and date, and move it to town hall. Well, that would work for me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because they have a room as well set up um, oh, yeah. for yes. that. Yeah. Um, I also heard that there was a suggestion that there was someone willing to come in and tape them. So, um, Rick, has you, have you heard anything else? I well, haven't. said her son could do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he needed a little training. Then. Laura. Laura. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But is Tom Hall expecting us to hire somebody? Well, they pay. We don't pay for yeah, it. No, so I'm saying, like, we, we can't be responsible for hiring somebody. That's not no, our job. No, I think their, their idea is I think to, to um, not have to have someone since we have wired the rooms. Um, yeah, well, I mean, let's, let's so take what, use of, so We have to take use of the technology. So why right? would I mean, we not use Tom Hall? What's, yeah, the, Tom Hall? Sounds good. What's the difference where it's held if it's. Nothing. I gotta walk another two direct. blocks. Oh <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. you know how tough that is for you. Yeah, that's that for you. <laughs> well, I mean, there are times where Rick has run downstairs and grabbed stuff from his office that right. you know does that's help true. our meetings. Um, a convenience-wise, so it sounds know. like town hall is the easiest. Same, <laughs> same if time. I mean, it's nice to have the park and rec meeting in, in the park building. Right. I mean, it's it's far. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but the town hall. It is right. smaller. I think it is. So if we have 40 people show up, yeah. you know, yeah. I mean, yeah. right. If we had the groups yeah. that we had the last two months, it would be tight in there. We'd have standing room only and people out in the hallway. Mm -hmm. So what time is yoga done? Is it seven? Seven uh, ends at seven. Yeah. So, so you need it really be seven thirty because I got to take further to clear out, mm -hmm. set up. Rick, I'm, I'm sure you ever thought of like, how about yoga coming in here? I mean, we talked about that, but this, this is a smaller room. I mean, I guess I have to see how many people are in the class. Old, but yeah. everything they, they, everything's in there. Yeah. Their blankets, the, the blocks, everything they use is in there. So. What about the other, the, the uh, multi-purpose room? Because I know my yoga teacher, Allie, switching it. She's switching her yoga class to that room because she prefers it. To the what? The exercise room? The exercise room. Uh, I have to look. But I think there's a. Is there something going on? There's a class. 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 There's a income to pay for our beautiful concerts in the summer and our fireworks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and again, I that don't want those to go running for a lot, a lot yeah. of years at the same mm -hmm. time in the same place. So it kind of seems a little more. I don't. I think it um, makes sense for us to be here because it is park and rec, but I feel like if the consensus is to stay at 6.30 on a Monday and that's okay. what's available, then that's... Well, there is another option like that, that they still don't get filmed. <laughs> 
I Which didn't sound like that was an option. Sound like well, it's an option. It may not be one that you know is favorable, favorite, but it, right. you know, for looking um, at all the options. And I also feel like if there is um, someone from Guilford that's willing to do it, I don't understand why we wouldn't. Um, do we have a, a visual arts department up at the high school? Mm. I don't know if we do. It's been a long time since I've been there. I know. It's been <laughs> Me too. I've never Four been to our... this weekend, actually. 20-something. <laughs> but, 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 um, let's see, who would probably be the one to find out about that? Um, Bruce Scranton. Yes. He, he's the, um, he's the IT specialist up there. So Bruce would be able to say, yeah, I think I have a student who would be able to help you do that. Um. Either he can be, either he can get paid, or he can get community, he can get community service out of it. Yeah. Right, and that's what we're wanting someone to use. Whoa. Um, I would I'm confused about that. If there's someone else we're getting in, what's the equipment? If that's GCTV. That's GCTV is available to anybody right. who wishes to be trained on it. So it would be the same thing. This, just this, getting this is owned by Comcast. And they provide it to us. I make a motion that we move the meetings same time Monday, what, 6 30 at the town hall? And that, that was definitely an option. Mm -hmm. Well, before we do that, I, I suggest that we explore mm -hmm. yeah. other options. I, I, I don't, I'm, I'm like with Claire. I mean, this is Park and Rec, this is Park mm -hmm. where we should be. So, my feeling, Rick, is that we need to find out if. An option to to replace Peter is completely off the table. When does this decision have to be made? Next month? Well, I think he's <laughs> Next month? Be no, 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 no. I as mean, much as Peter loves us, I think he's going to you go. What, what, when, We're just holding on to you forever. No, when when will the contract expire? Peter's, and when, Peter's essentially gone. It's yes. expired. Gone. Okay, he's it's expired. Back. Yes. Yeah. So the November meeting needs to have a source. Uh, I need uh, to have a person to. Are you, are you for skipping over October's meeting? You're not coming. Oh, I'm sorry, October. <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry. So, did you, you just cancel that meeting? Yeah. Nope. Um, so, you know, is replacing Peter completely off the table? Because then, if, if it is, then we don't need to ask the high school, which I do think is a great idea. Um, we also have a volunteer. I'm not sure if it's a volunteer or if he's being volunteered, <laughs> um, you know, or if, um, if that's the case, then, you know, I guess if we're all in favor of keeping it Monday at 630, then we would have to move to town hall. Well, the high school and students though, might not need to be paid. I mean, that could right. be right. Exactly. Yeah, right. 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 So, could be offered community service. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Or he could be paid. Well, we have to have make sure that someone that's going to continue to do it, too. Yeah. I mean, right. Right. And we, we, we go during the summer. The time. Yeah. yeah. No, we don't. We, we go all year. How much does the equipment cost to get something put in here for meetings? Oh, I think that's a raising. Susan, I agree with you. We have short term and long term problem here. <laughs> yeah. Short term <laughs> yes. is October. Yeah, it's short term is letting him. They put the technologies in these rooms to use it. I know. And we're not going to use it? I mean, we got to use the technology. What's the sense of putting it in if we're not going to use the technology? So let's use the technology. I mean, that's just like, that seems like a no brainer to me. Why yeah, would he go out and get somebody? That's why I'm saying I make a motion to have that the town hall. It's there, let's use it. And for some reason, we don't, it doesn't work out there, it's too small, we get big crowd. And we'll cross that bridge when we get to it, but the technology is there. We could make it temporary. Are we, did we all agree? I don't have a strong time preference, but did we all agree that 6.30 is better than 7.30, which seems to kind of that solve seemed an issue? To be the <laughs> so that means we just when, move over there? When I brought it up building. in July, that seemed to be the consensus that people did not want to move to 7.30. That it was too late. I don't have a strong opinion either I don't, about I, it. It I doesn't mean, matter to me. But, I'd um, rather do 7.30 here than 6.30 at Town Hall. Me too. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Or 6.30 on Tuesday, but no one seems mm -hmm. to want a day except Monday. I, I'm with her. I'm set. I feel like I'm... Yeah, in my head, it's Monday, like, so like if we switched it to another yeah, day. I, like I think you, you deserve, I mean, you're the chair. I think... Yeah, but you, I'm only the chair for so long. I know, but still, I mean, you kind of like, you know, you... You go the extra yard. You got to, you know, you run. I like the. Can we? I like like the. I would like to accommodate you. 
But can we just not make a, you know, a decision long term and just try sure. something once, which could be mm -hmm. either go to town hall next month at six thirty or just go next door sure. at seven thirty and see what happens. Right. Maybe it'll make us faster with our meetings because it'll be later, <laughs> so we'll want to get out sooner. I don't know, but um, I know I can be wishful we thinking, but I mean, there's, you know, there's two options, work. and I don't see why we have to be locked into either. I'm, I'm, I'm going to look and see how many are in the yoga class and yeah. find out. Can, is it? Can we move them in here? It's only one because all their stuff is Monday. there. We, right. we can. We can. I can have Todd bring all that stuff in here. Uh, or Terry, whoever, you know, Terry Haskell, move it in here so it's here for them. They prefer the carpet. They like having the carpet to be on. Yeah. Um, but is it possible to um, plan to have our meeting next Monday? Oh, not next. Sorry. I love you all, but I don't want to see you next Monday. Um, our October 3rd meeting um, to 7.30 to try it in that room while we're gathering yeah, the information that we need. Well, do you want me to first find out if we can move yoga in here, then then we could meet there at 6.30. Mm -hmm. Why do I do that? That's yeah. okay. Yeah. That, that yeah. keeps everything the same, just yeah. a different well, room. What time does yoga start, though? Five. Five. Okay, Five. I'm just asking because if all of their stuff is in there, we'd have to coordinate that, otherwise there's people returning stuff, or we'd have, you know what I mean? Yep. You'd have to be moved out in here, ready to go. But again, I gotta see how many people are in the class. If they're 15 or 20, this mm -hmm. is gonna be too small. If it's but that doesn't 10, then maybe we can do it. The closet across the hall with the chairs. Some of the stuff didn't manage it. Um, which place? Right across the hall from the yoga room. There's like a room with chairs in it. Yeah, well that's, the, that's the area that's of the refuge. We're not supposed to really even put anything in Oh, is it? Yeah. Um, so that's our, like if there's a fire mind. up here. Yeah, we'll you put a shit at your place. Just throw it there. <laughs> our plan, I'll, I'll check. One of the actions for October <laughs> is to use um, the room next door for our October meeting using the technology that's available to us. Um, we just need to know whether it's at 6.30 or 7.30, mm -hmm. whether we're moving yoga or not. Okay. So our plan is to be here at Park and Rec, across the hall for Time October. Time TBD. Time TBD. Sounds like a plan. Okay, moving on to F. If everyone's, does everyone cool with that? Yes, yep. I, I agree with that. that. Um, F, dog park agility course, like, wow. One word, done. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, cool. So fast. Um, all the posts have been extremely positive they on Facebook. Nice so kudos to those ladies for yeah. coming in, asking to do it, and did it. Um, Bittner Park Improvements. Oh, no, here you go, Clivus. John. Clivus the Clivus Moltrum restroom. I've been waiting for this. <laughs> so let me make the first part easy. Shade structure, don't worry about it. There's a tent that uh, uh, Tony set up that we got that we had available, and, and it's perfect. It's exactly what we need. So we don't have to do anything with shade. Oh, great. That's good. Yeah, good. So that, that's done. Um, so I, I'm having some second thoughts about this. Cle so Clevis Moltrum is a composting bathroom. It's a, it's a latrine. Um, I've uh, been interested in this concept for about 20 years. Uh, Hamanasa has them. Uh, most state parks, um, many federal parks have them. Yeah, Chatfield uh, Hollow has them. I know the right. pickleball courts in Old Saybrook, they just put one in, one of these in it in May. Um, they're not fancy, they're a lot better than a, a portage on, um, but they're, they're sustainable because there's no electricity, no water, they're a composting unit. However, <laughs> I was really sold on the idea until I spoke with um, a park director who has several of these, and he said that the, he's hoping eventually to get rid of them and go with septic systems. The maintenance is, is it's a big maintenance issue. Um, not to get graphic, but uh, you, can't, you can't pump them out. You can't. Because it's all solids. So the, the, the urine goes into one tank, that you pump out every month or something, but the, the other part stays. Um, and there, it, it, it could be four years before you have to do anything with it, but literally, I was told, literally you shovel it out mm -hmm. and you bury it somewhere. Mm -hmm. And we're not, my staff like this. <laughs> Who's you? <laughs> <laughs> like, they, they service that's not that job that's description, okay? <laughs> yeah, I won't get too far with it, but, uh, but uh, that's, that's for the that's Coast Guard. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and you have to rake it once a month, so I asked Todd Rake if yeah. he would rake it, he said no. <laughs> yeah, he said, no, I don't think okay. I want to do that, right? Uh -huh. um, so I, I, I met up there with the uh, public works director um, Friday. I'm trying to get a meeting. He's the only one who's responsible. I want to get the, t the uh, health director, 
um, Public Works and Town Engineer to go again and look at other options. So if we decide we want to put a regular bathroom up there, what would it take? And where can we do it? Where can you put a leach field? That's the biggest issue, mm -hmm. really. Where can you put a leach field here? Where we wanted to put the port the um, Clavis Moultrum unit uh, is a great spot. It was right next to the skate park. Mm -hmm. Perfect location for it. And that was selected with the, the guy from Clavis Moultrum met with me up there because he had to have enough light for the solar panel because there was a fan that runs and uh, mm -hmm. vents everything out. And, um, but um, but, to put but, a but a bathroom facility so couldn't go there. You'd have to have a septic. We'd have to dig a well, right? right? We'd have to dig a well. Mm -hmm. We'd have to power. We might be able to tie into the, to the light, the last light pole that's there. That might be enough power. We'll have to find that out. So maybe we may not have to bring a bunch of power up there for this. I have some thoughts where maybe it could go, but I, we, we got to do some test bits to find out if you can put a leach field. Oh, my God. This is going to be the most expensive yes. toilet in town. It's going to be expensive. Um, so um, I, I just want to look at all all the options. And yeah. I was pretty sold on the Clevis Multum idea until I spoke with somebody who's got one, and when he told me, yeah, you got to dig it out, I said, oh, my gosh. Was, and so the company would do that. That would be a contract. They would do it. Uh, but they have to bury it on site somewhere. They can't haul it away. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that's again, I'm trying to get health director involved and everybody, you know, before I um, go any farther with it. Chatfield Hollow has a couple of these on their main road and, and their main hiking trails. Um, you, it is not going to be a. Uh, it's going to be. It's going to stink. I, I don't know how else to describe it. It just it smells like any other latrine that you have out in the woods. Um, the fan only works when there's when there's sun. If it's if it's um, now that I read the description of it, uh, um, the um, if it's solar paneled uh, powered, it's not going to work. It's just you're it's overwhelming because it's a closed system. Um, so the bottom line is the bathroom. The bathrooms, we got to have a bathroom up there. Yeah. It's just a matter of which, which kind. Is there a portage on there now? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it, it gets one. It's one, one, one. At the it, bottom? It's no, at the bottom. Yeah. At the bottom. Yeah. yeah. But when you got 200 people playing pickleball right. and disc golf and everything else going on up there, it's, it's not. Yeah. I mean, we could put two, we could put three there, but I think it's still. That part of the park, Vinter Park North, year round gets more use than the rest of the park does. Yeah. And we got a really nice bathroom facility for everything else. Spring and fall, that part of the park gets a lot of use when there's literally going on right. soccer, playground. But year round, if you look at year round activity, Binder Park North now is more use than, right. than the rest of the facility. And, and they got not, a portage so on. We're not looking at, like, we can't even compare the prices to the Porta Johns because we would have to rent all year multiple. So, I mean, that just, I just see dollar signs with the pumping, the renting, right. the removal, mm -hmm. the. Okay. Yeah. Monthly maintenance. Also, right. yeah. So what about the, the facilities that are by the field, the baseball, softball field? Um, what hours are they open? Are they, are they, I know um, they're far if you're in disc golf, dusk. but from dawn to dusk, they're yeah. just automatically. They're not in the winter, they're closed in the winter. Yeah, winter, closed in the winter. So that would be an issue, though, because if people still play pickleball in the winter and still use, in, in, um, um, you know, at least put a heater in it, we'd have to, we have to close it. But maybe for three months out of here, we put a portage on there instead of 12 months, you know, to so have something. Um, or, or we don't have anything, you know. But if people, if we have good weather in January, people are going to be, you saw, they're going to be playing pickleball, right. pickleball there. Right. I mean, I guess I was thinking for now, the reason I asked that question is because for now, if people only use the north side of the park, they may not realize that there's open restrooms on the other side. And that's too far if you're in a hike and you're running out or on the skate park. But yeah. they... But it's not too far if they're leaving. I, I mean, there is a way, maybe a way for them to, like, say there are restroom facilities by the entrance or however you name yeah. it. So people could. But the portage on is getting a lot, a lot of use. That's what I mean by the portage on. Like, there is a restroom there in yeah. the hours. Yeah. Um, I, I just think that we're, we, we, if we're going to make an improvement, we really, that's an improvement. We've got to put a, a bathroom facility up there. And better than a Porter John. I still like. I still do like the Clevis Multrum idea. I would suggest if in the future we want to think about it, maybe Chaffinch wouldn't be a bad place for that because it's just you know it's minimal use versus a lot of use, you know. And maybe that gets cleaned the out every ten bearing years. Bearing it on the on the property though is what's getting me because it's like <clears> where at Chaffinch would you do that? Chaffinch doesn't have a lot of where you could dump it. 
Well, maybe, yeah, I mean, maybe gets hauled out or something. I don't, I don't know, but. Um, when I just asked that question, I only meant temporarily while we're figuring out the bathroom. Right, right. I just meant for now, if yeah. that porta potty is getting too much use. A little graphic, but does it compost? Like, you know. Like, it does. Yeah, so it's yeah. not exactly what you think. It, it's you're not. Right, right, right. You're moving around. Right. You're right. <laughs> they, they add enzymes to it periodically to help, you know, with the bacteria yes, break, right, break right. down. Yes. They, you have to add uh, wood shavings to it once a week. Like a coffee can, you just pour it in there. Yeah. But it does some kind of um, um, but then who's be chemical be reaction or something. That? Like then you have to now have someone going up. I mean, we have to have people going up there anyways now to do the port johns and everything. Yeah, um, it, it does become a little bit inert. I don't know how much. To your point, right. I mean, technically, you could use it. As compost, I, yeah. I'm not going right. to suggest we as do that, but right. mm -hmm. you know, if someone when I say they bury it, it's it's more composted than it is yeah. something else. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm just thinking like a chap, like, I don't know, I just don't see a spot where we need to fertilize. Yeah. <laughs> There's not much going on down there. So I do want, I do want to meet with the town engineer, like I said, and, and uh, maybe t do a couple test pits and some other spots I've been there. And, you know, I'm thinking, for example, where the portage on is right now, just beyond that telephone pole, it's the, the barrier there. There's some space going into the bank Maybe I'll tuck sort of in that area so it wouldn't take up a lot of parking space mm -hmm. and it could still be cl close enough. I don't think up top we can do it. It's not virgin natural soil up there. It's all, you know, brought in stuff. Um, and regarding parking, you know, we've talked about those bins getting out of there. Public Works is building bins for us right now at 50 driveway. So we're going to be able to clear some of that. Maybe one we might keep up there, but three or four we might be able to move out. So we are going to gain some parking spaces there. So even if we lost one or two spaces because we put a bathroom facility there, I think we're okay. Mm -hmm. But the key is going to be if there's a septic, right. uh, a, a, a leach field leach capability. So with something like that, does that fall under the, the COVID funds with, because it's a park improvement? Could. Okay. Yeah. Not saying that we have that money to use, but yeah. if we had to, yeah. some of it could be mm. allocated to that. Because that is an interesting choice. I, Restroom or more pickleball courts? <laughs> or maybe both. Maybe you have a you know vineyard yeah. market you know, includes all that. So if you put more pickleball courts, you're gonna need a you you're going to need the restroom. Right? Yeah, they're, 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 the board of selectmen did approve early on when we got that money. And I, I went to them with a lot of our projects in our five year plan and they proved if we were gonna move the basketball courts up there, there was a pretty good sized chunk of money that was approved for that. Okay. So I think that some money's been dedicated. Oh, and, and keep in mind the splash pad too. We had money set aside for the splash pad out of ARPA, which we didn't have to use because we got that donation. Right. Well, if the if the basketball court has to be expendable, this is this is a justification for doing it. Right. Right. The uh, so obviously the bathrooms at Bittner now they they run off a well, right? Correct. Now, has it ever been a problem with that well drying out at all or anything like that? Or? It hasn't. Even with this drought we had, we haven't had a problem. There's never been a problem up there? Okay. No. So we would have to dig a well. We'd have to put a leach field in. Um, you know, we'd have to have a septic tank. We'd have to, you know, the facility, would we put bring that, in power. Would we put that underneath the parking lot? The leaching field? Well, I don't know. That's what I say. We have to do some test bits and have to find out if it could go there. There is one other option that I don't know if it's a good one, but... Um, and, and this the public works director suggested there are um, uh, restroom trailers that you can get. Yeah, um, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and I heard that didn't last too long. I, I, I have a call to uh, Brantford today to say there was some vandals, and I don't think mm -hmm. it, they kept it very long. But North Brantford uh, bought two of them from the state for fifty dollars. <laughs> what? Yeah, fifty dollars each. So he spent a hundred dollars. So. Uh, the, the, our public works director told me that. And I have a call to them, and they didn't call me back yet. Find out. All from 100. Yeah. Yeah. They're just fancy porta potties. Well, it's a trailer. It's a trailer, so you can have a men's room, a ladies' room. Yeah, it's a porta But it'll be sink, so you can wash your hands. Probably have to get pumped out a lot. I mean, that's, that's again, it's one of those situations, you know. Is that like what Bishop's hats? Uh, yeah, they might. I thought, I, yeah. Yeah. Might be similar. I could go take a look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, another option. I want to look at all the options before we decide yeah, what, what sure. is the way to go. Because it's, I mean, it's obviously not something that's going to happen tomorrow. It's right. not needed right away. We have a solution right now. We have a portage on. Right. Um, so but if you expand, like, if 
we expand right. the right you really have to do we want to make sure we have it all right. lined up right. system yeah. So I just want to let you know, I want to look at all, touch all the bases, look at every every possibility there, Perfect. and then decide what's the way to go. All right. Okey dokey. Unfinished business age, permanent 5070 baseball field, which you said standing field suggested that it was Bittner B, which is the lower the lower field. field. Um, now there there is a another thing that needs to be discussed about that eventually, is that we have irrigation on that field, but only on the infield. Correct. Mm -hmm. And not in the outfield. Right. So. During the summertime, the infield looked great. Outfield yeah. right. burnt to a crisp. Yep. Yeah. And that was the same with the softball field. So that would be something we would have to, again, plan for with regard to improvements for the uh, Bittner Park field. Yeah. Um, Is the irrigation field uh, city water or? It's well, well water. It's well. Well, or you could tap into the West River. Right. Or, yeah. It okay. really comes out of the river. Perfect. I yeah. didn't want to hear about city water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No cost. But, but there was a time during this drought, there was absolutely no water yeah. leaving Lake Quantipog right. into the West River. I think I, I drive past the dam every day on mm -hmm. my way to work, and it was about a three week period where no there was water. no water going down the West River. Right. Mm -hmm. It was completely um, dry. Right. Yeah. Um, Rick, do you, does your team have? Um, agreement with Standing Field's suggestion of Bittner B? Since they're the ones that are, you know, constantly booking the fields, talking to the travel teams, the Little League, um, softball, who's using what, um, did, they, did they have a preference? Well, what I'm trying to get in is buy-in from, from Travel Baseball, and I, I called the representative today, and he was not available to talk, so he's going to call me tomorrow, call me back. He was in a meeting when, when I called, um, actually on jury duty. <laughs> so he said, can I call you back? Uh, I don't know if he's taking a vote at that moment or what, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I want to I, I want to have a conversation to make sure there's everyone's on the same page, mm -hmm. and so um, you know I'll keep pursuing that. Okay, um, and then as far with the um, fence, the suggestion from Standing Field of using the posts and then the rolling out the fence, as far as your staff, the maintenance field maintenance. Um, they would not be too happy with that. With okay, so when we talked, I told you that um, the Bearcats up in Moodus, yeah, they um, before every game, the, the coaches roll out that plastic fence. Mm -hmm. There's poster there. They roll out the fence for every game. They take it down for every game. Um, so that way, field maintenance comes in. Is are they worried about the fence being there permanently? Like not permanently, but like for the season, so they can't get to it or. Um, do they not want to be responsible for taking it down? I think if if if, if um, Little League did, did like the group you just talked about, that, that would make that would go great because we had one. You remember at the high school uh, varsity mm -hmm. softball field, there used to be one, mm -hmm. and it was getting you can't you can't weed whack close to it because you hit it and you can, and, and, and it tears and, it. Yeah. And yeah. and guess what? You weed whack close to it because you yeah. you know you miss and or you don't miss, you hit it and it rips it up and. Um, it was very, just like what John was talking about, it had sleeves in the ground, and then the, uh, it was like a fiberglass pole went into that sleeve, and then the fence was tied onto all that, the, uh, it was like netting. When, um, when I was working the uh, umpiring games up at the Pratt & Whitney Complex, we had seven fields up there, and every Friday night they rolled out the fences, and Sunday afternoon they rolled them back up again. Yeah, and that's perfect. Yeah. And, and the reason being is that that was the agreement that the person who was leasing the property from Pratt and Whitney, that they would do that because they had their adult leagues come in and those 200 foot fences would interfere with their adult play. And, and so they just, it, 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 you, you, you just put it on the side and there's, a, there's like a, a, um, a turnkey type of thing that you just roll it up. And, right. And then you just put it, in. what they did is that they rented a um, uh, Eagle trailer and they put put them into eagle trailers. I, I know yeah. this is, you know, outside of the field, but uh, if you have the posts in the ground, are there holes, are there caps or something? So is, is, am I understanding it right? No, it's the, 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 the shaft actions. goes into the ground and is flush with the ground. So you could you could you could drive a lawnmower over the top of it yeah. and it would well, I'm not just interfere. About like a foot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
No, not a foot. It, it's 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 for no, no, I mean like your foot, like someone if they're catch running in the field, if yeah. there's they're a hole. Catch that's all I meant. No, yeah, no, 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 no. It's not a hole. No, 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 no. You 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 have a shaft, and you have a plastic sleeve that goes in there, and it fills the whole. The best way to describe it would be like a on a golf course when you put a cup inside the hole for the for the for the uh, for the pin placement. Yeah, the question is, is, is it a danger? In other words, if you fall no. on it with a knee, you're going to hurt yourself. You're no. talking about when you take the fence out. Uh, yeah, I'm, right. That's what, I'm yeah. sorry. Well, I'm talking no. about when there's no fence there. Yeah. I'm talking about when no. it's rolled out and the posts are gone. Yeah. If there's, that means there's imperiatic no. holes in no. the field. No, there, there, there's no problem with that. If something a little pops up, you just take a little three-pound mall hammer and you tap it back down, and it goes back down flush with the field. And then, so, if we were, if Bittner B was selected for the 50-70 field and this temporary fence was put up, how does that work with softball wanting a fence? Can they piggyback on the same fence, the same no. holes? No, it has to be separate fence. And I think Tony measured. I don't think they both would fit, so we'd have to decide how we would do that. Okay. So I, I think the priority would be for the 50-70 for the, for the boys' baseball. I think for the girls' softball, I think that's uh, – and I'm a girls' softball guy. I mean, I, I do weekend games all the time. Um, I think it's a little bit more of a fantasy for them because um, – Little league girls don't quite hit 200 foot home runs. I mean, that that's the, the high school fence uh, for the new varsity for the varsity field up there. That's 200 feet, and when you do varsity games, it is a momentous occasion when you can get a girl who can hit a ball 200 feet over the um, the fence. Uh, mainly, the, the reason why it's it's they want a fence is because. You don't want the scenario where a girl hits a ball and you just keep running after the ball. The fence actually stops it. So now you, the the offensive player is limited to having just two bases rather than three or four. So um, from a, I mean, as much as I like girls softball, I think the it's 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 a luxury. Okay. Whereas the boys, I think it would be something that they've been asking for for years. And to have a dedicated feel for their own, and I think this would suit their needs. Okay, so Rick, what I'm hearing is that we can't do anything right now because we still need to talk to the travel team mm -hmm. to see if this um, is going to meet needs in um, Little League as well. So we will see this on the agenda next month. Yeah. Okay. Moving on to new business, request for our bench. This was in our packet um, mm -hmm. under correspondence from Penny Half. Um, they would like to put a Adirondack chair or bench at Shell Beach um, in honor of their son who just passed away. I will say that um, Shell Beach is, has not been on our list of where we have kept track of space, benches, and chairs. Um, I will openly admit I haven't been to Shell Beach since I was probably in high school doing stupid things. Um, so, <laughs> um, I honestly don't feel like I could make a suggestion on a yes or a no on that because I can't picture where it would go. Um, Which one is Shell Beach? Off of 146. Yeah. And it's literally just shells. I mean, oh. from what People I remember. Go clamming there. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think yeah. if, if, if you approve yeah. them doing it, I, I could meet with them yeah. there. We could find a spot for it to happen. But it wasn't on the list, you know, when you were right. always making sense. It was yeah. kind of like not one of the places we yeah, really we, even thought of putting there. Right. right. We don't already visit it, really. Right. There isn't any, so there isn't anything there now? There's no. Much, so it okay. might be kind of nice to. Well, no. Well, 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 here's, here's, actually not to spot. show, but, well, yeah. here's my question. What about a storm surge? Well, that's what, like, uh, yeah. I can't picture where the water and everything comes yeah, up. Right. So, like, placement of one, yeah, I, safety. I, I go there on a regular basis. Not a regular basis, but my, my opinion is not a place for a chair. Like John said, the, it, it's going to get eaten away by the I mean, there's I mean, not what's a the lot of parking either. Yeah, I was going to say, what's the accessibility to it? I mean, yeah, there's, there's, there's like, parking. There's, like, there's parking for three cars. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's not a place for, like I said, it's not a place for a chair. People aren't walking by and deciding to sit down. And look right. At the water. No, a lot of people go down there for shell fishing. Right. That's what they're no, I mean, I, I see people down there on a yeah. regular basis, but it's just, mm -hmm. like John said, it's, it's going to yeah. get washed away in the sh There's no place to me, there's no place to put it because it's going to end up who knows where because it's, 
There's not a place to put it, it what it comes down to. Um, is this a possibility? I, I understand what they're saying, that that was his favorite spot and everything. Is it a possibility to go back to them and see if there is another spot? Um, thinking back, I don't even know if I have my notes with me. I can look for um, where we had still said that there was availability to put one. I know we had said possibly at Chittenden that there might be another space. Um, I'll, I can find my notes, Rick, um, from when we did our walks, when I kept track of what was where, and let you know. Um, I mean, my heart goes out to the family, but I just, the, I'm not sure. I know that he says that they were excited that they moved to Moose Hill. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 718 <coughs> is a New York exchange. But not now. Yeah, but so do I. Yeah. Um, it's so. Queens, Brooklyn. What? It's Queens, Brooklyn. I know. Boy, I'm so it's my number. Could we um, table that one, Rick, and I get back to you with some okay. well, um, spots? Be before we hit the table on that one, um, do we have a need for any other Adirondack chairs at Jacob's Beach? Well, that's why I said I'm going to get, Rick, my notes from when we did our park walk on where we still had spaces. Okay. Um, and I believe one of the places we said was Chittenden on the back beach. Mm -hmm. um, uh, is that beach a... at risk for storm surge? But again, though, it, it may not even... I would just go back to the family because it may just right. be specifically that Shell Beach was his place okay. and it doesn't matter so, where else was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I, will, I will get in contact I don't know, with you. I think we got to think about maybe where to get out of, out of this business. Yes, we talk about this all the time. I know. I think we should I think get we out of it. We are getting business. out of it, though, because we have a list and we have a limited mm -hmm. number. Yes. Yeah. So I think. Mm -hmm. And We're when, slow when does it end? Well, that I'm not sure, Ben. She didn't bring her list. But, um, <laughs> when I get my bench. All right. Yeah. So, um, can we roll over that now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To be um, cautious <laughs> on time. We all get yeah, a bench. We, <laughs> we have to be cautious on our time. Oh, um, yeah. And we have two more okay. topics. Oh, of boy. Adam's, um, Adam's, be Adam's basketball court repairs. Okay, so um, you, what, you saw the letter that I, I had to, to, to Matt Hoy, the Board of Selectmen approved uh, hiring Hinding Tennis to do to resurface the court, which actually I think is either done or going to be done this. So okay. <laughs> they were out there this weekend working on it. Um, and then the lights, uh, I think was, it ended up being around 33000 The letter said thirty eight, but I think uh, they're, they're cutting off the shipping cost. Um, let's say $34,000 from Musco Lighting. Uh, the lights are, o are in order. Um, I'm meeting with them and uh, the school vice principal on Thursday. Uh, the vice principal suggested that we put a timer on the outside with a push button so that... Kind of like the high school? Yeah, okay. like at the tennis court. Same did idea. I, did I miss something? How long the lights been down there? How long have there been lights here? Yeah. Forever. Yeah. Just, before my time. But that, that, what, I'm, I'm missing, the pole stuff. fell. What's that? The pole fell. Yeah, I know, but I'm saying, why are, we, why are we putting lights there? Because there were already, we're replacing the lights that fell. Yeah. Is it at the Adams t uh, basketball court? Yeah, so, but it's in, when were, when were the, how long the lights been, I've never known the lights to be on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, we run our dog obedience class on Monday nights in the fall. Cause oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm mistaken. Then. Yeah. Okay, so we have had lights. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, yes. I, I apologize. It, so I have to go to out. I have to go to yeah. design review committee on Wednesday because we, we, we got suggested by planning and zoning director that they have to approve doing it. Okay. Even okay. though there've been lights there, it's just. But that's what I was talking about. They they sent me a photo photometric of the whole dark sky thing, there's nothing above the courts, mm -hmm. very, very little spill off right. the court. That's why I want to get at Long Hill, the same kind of uh, right. Be before plan. Before there was the police courts, it was, that Adams. was Adams. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Adams was the place to yeah. go. There were summer basketball leagues, yeah. and kids would come from the shoreline to play there. Okay. We have a um, Rick, do you need anyone to come to support you at that meeting? Uh, I'll let you. I'll find out tomorrow. Okay. So it's four o'clock. I think it's here, but I'll uh, I'll, I'll talk to. Design review by Zoom. Oh, Zoom. Yeah. Oh, Zoom? is it? Oh, okay. Yeah, they didn't give me an info on that. I hope okay. it's on the agenda because they said it was stuff last Thursday. All right, and then the what last new business is Adams Tennis Court reconstruction. Yep, we got the uh, specs in design today, uh, so that'll be going, hopefully going out to bid soon. Uh, again, it's something that's in our capital plan. We have one hundred eighty thousand dollars in there to do that. Um, 
and we're going to put it as an alternate to expand the parking lot. We, we may not do it. We're going to have an alternate, an option. If we need to expand, if we think we're going to have more pickleball there or whatever, or tennis tournaments or something, where right now there are 12 parking spaces, I think, maybe 14. Um, if people if park people, the grass, though. They, they do, right. but we'd rather they don't because it, right. it, it compacts the roots of the trees right. and everything. But we can, we can double the parking lot size to... Um, Actually, I think, we, yeah, I don't think it's 14. I think it's less than that. But whatever. It, it would make it big enough so that if we had 16 people playing pickleball, that they could all could park there. How about we recommend it? Don't expand the parking lot. Put a bicycle rack there. Good people will ride their bike or something. No? Okay. Yeah. Like, I need to <laughs> we just, we just oh. keep making more parking right. lots, more parking lots, bigger, better. Well, um, before we adjourn, was there anyone, um, any other new business that anyone needs to discuss? I just have one quick uh, question. Of course you do. What what is the um, progress of the lacrosse expansion into the chestnut tree? Yeah, I haven't farm. heard anything about that. That's I think they uh, that's on hold a little bit right now. I think. Okay. Yeah, I'm again looking over old notes and saying, well, we passed it on to them, but they ain't done nothing. Huh? No. Nope. Nope. Okay. Yeah, I love that. All right. Well, then, um, can we get a motion to adjourn the meeting? I shall motion to adjourn. I second it. Thank you. Thank you. Peter. Hi. 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 Okay. Bye guys. Thank you. Thank you guys. Sorry that one went so long.